to be really loud. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. I am so glad that you have come to worship with us this morning and that you have found your little oasis of shade. I told someone a little earlier that we might become a merry band of naked believers in a little bit as we shed our clothing in the heat of the sun, but whatever we need to do on this Pentecost Sunday where the wind has blown through and the fire like divided tongues rests on each person. So as you get a little warm just think about that fire of the spirit that has come and rest on each one of us today i have a couple of announcements one is when you open your bulletin you'll see your hymn insert when you open your hymn insert i know this should be um, probably obvious but i'll just point it out to you the first hymn is right when you open it the second hymn simply turn it over and your third hymn is on the back that's just a little bit different than we've done it in the past, so I wanted to point that out. The other thing is, Carol Esther, who loves to bake and misses baking more than anything, has provided cootie-free individual treats for us today. So as you leave today, please take a homemade muffin with you and understand that it was created and given to you in love. Let us have a word or a time of quiet prayer where we can open our hearts and our minds to what the Spirit needs to say to us today as we prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity to gather and for the warmth of your love and the fire of your spirit that blows through each of our lives, making all things new. May everything that we do in this time together bring you the honor and glory that is due your holy name. And all this we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Clap your hands to worship instead of speaking holy spirit come to us let us sing together when it comes time for us all to pray together holy spirit come to us with tongues of flame the holy spirit descends to burn in hearts anew of wind we sense God's presence blowing afresh throughout the world. Holy Spirit come to us. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of love and grace is heard. Holy Spirit come to us. Divine Advocate, we seek your 
guidance as we search for the spirit of truth.
We turn to God in prayer, not because we are compelled, but because God invites us. We come to God not because of our righteousness, but because of God's grace. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we open our hearts to you, trusting that your love and goodness is stronger than all of our shortcomings. We have been afraid to trust you. We have forgotten the assurance of your unending presence. We have sacrificed our convictions, quieted our voices, given in to distractions, and looked out for ourselves above all else. We have thought about giving up when the task before us seems too great. Forgive us for all these things and help us to be guided by your spirit and filled with the one who gives us life. Amen. The promise of the prophet and the presence of the spirit assures us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us celebrate the life we've been given through the grace of God, the love of the Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit by safely sharing signs of peace with one another. God of power and grace, fill us with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit so that we may be your church, a people with dreams and visions that work in all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. Listen for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw that what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they're staying in Jerusalem were God-fearing Jews of every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because they each heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these, aren't these those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Carp Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, 
Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked each other, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Now this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit to all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your men, young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and bellows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. A round of applause for Fred Clare, who said, Parthians, Elamites, Cappadocia, just tripped over his tongue like he knew exactly what he was saying. Yay, thank you, Fred. That takes bravery. <laughs> I can't tell you how many emails, phone calls, and face-to-face -face conversations I've had in the last few weeks with people who are aching to return to normal. We all want to take off our masks, eat at restaurants, go to concerts, travel and hug and sit in the presence of the people we love without having to worry about catching or transmitting a potentially fatal virus. And for those of us who love God and cherish the church, we long to go back into the sanctuary where we can light candles, listen to the organ, sing the hymns, speak the liturgy, or simply sit and stare at the stained glass window with the cross that hangs in front of it. On the day we realized that we had to close the doors, I will never forget one of our ruling elders saying, but church is the port in the storm. When everything is falling apart around us, the church is the one place we can go to find our anchor, our stability, our compass. If we close the door, then where would we go? How would we worship? What if people got too used to staying at home or decided to go elsewhere? What if we didn't survive? And yet, here we are, over a year later, battered and bruised, but still bound together by the power of the Holy Spirit who led us all into new ways of worship and study and service. People who have been homebound for years can now worship with us online anytime. We've all learned how to zoom into each other's homes where we have kind of creepily seen each other's shower curtains and watched Rachel fix breakfast and met each other's pets. We found new ways to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and care for the sick from at least six feet away. But more importantly, we've learned that not even a global pandemic can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It has been a crazy, scary, amazingly educational time in the life of this church. And I am so ready for it to be over. Amen? Amen. We are this close to getting back to normal, and I have not been this excited, optimistic, or enthusiastic in over a year. But I also know that in the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as normal. To be normal literally means to conform to standard or a common type. And in his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul very specifically instructs the church to not be conformed to the standards of this age, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, which implies that the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is not found in the normal ways of doing things, but in the abnormal, 
unexpected, extraordinary movement of the Holy Spirit that is constantly blowing through our lives and making all things new. The scripture says it was the day of Pentecost, which is a Greek word that means 50 or 50th day. In Hebrew, it's Shavuot, which referred to the 50 days after Passover that ended with a holiday known as the Festival of Weeks. It was one of the three major pilgrimage festivals where Jewish people from all over the world would gather in the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the first fruits of the harvest and the lambs. And in later years, it became a time to celebrate the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. It was a time to celebrate new beginnings. And on this particular Pentecost, which was the 50th day after the very first Easter, a group of disciples, about 120 men and women, had gathered together to wait. Jesus had ascended into heaven the week before, but the only instructions he gave them was to stay in the city and wait for the arrival of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say when it was coming, or how it was coming, he simply said, stay and wait. So they did. And while they waited, the scripture says they devoted themselves to prayer and carefully chose a new leader to replace Judas. They did normal things. It had been 50 days, seven weeks, a little over a month and a half since everything they'd ever known and believed about life and death and God had been turned completely inside out and upside down. They needed some normal. Reverend Amy Butler said she wanted to gauge the disciples' mental and physical well-being after 50 days of emotional overload. So she went online and completed the social readjustment rating scale, which rates life stressors and susceptibility to stress-related illnesses. She said you have to choose whether some of the following has happened in your life in the course of the last 12 months. Death of a close friend, trouble with the law, change in your family situation, vocational upheaval, etc. She said, I chose everything on the scale that had happened to the disciples in just the seven weeks since Jesus' arrest, crucifixion, and resurrection. The test didn't have an option for one of your friends was resurrected, but she thought that might count as a stressor as well. And then she explained how to read the results. Zero to 149 indicates a low susceptibility to stress-related illness. A score of 150 to 299 indicated a medium susceptibility to stress-related illness. And anything over 300 indicated a high susceptibility to stress-related illness. She said taking the quiz as the disciples might have, the score was, anybody want to take a guess? 644. 644. After everything they'd been through in the last 50 days, she said, it's shocking the disciples were not dead. They needed some normal. But in the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as normal because the church was never created or called to conform, but to be transformed. And it was time. So God blew into the place where they were gathered and filled the whole house with the sound of a tornado. And divided tongues like fire fell upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and nothing was normal again. Now let's pause. And remember that the Holy Spirit is not literally a tornado. God does not send tornadoes or hurricanes or earthquakes or any other natural disaster into our world to get our attention and compel us to become faithful followers of Christ. The scripture says the Holy Spirit sounded like a tornado and divided tongues like fire fell on each of the disciples. These are metaphors to describe the indescribable power and presence of God that filled every single person in the house that day, giving them all the ability to do things differently in the days ahead so they could create a new life for themselves and everyone they encountered in ways they could never have imagined on their own. And the first thing the Holy Spirit empowered them to do was speak. 
My husband and I have recently become enamored with a Netflix documentary series called Somebody Feed Phil. Has anybody watched it? Two or three times a week, we make dinner, snuggle down in our favorite chairs, and turn on the TV, watch this tall, lanky, socially awkward Jewish man travel all over the world and eat. He eats street food and fancy food and food that's been prepared in people's homes. And when he eats something particularly delicious, he goes, mmm, that makes me happy. And then he finds the chef so he can thank them and express the joy they've brought to his life. Now he has no culinary training. He doesn't try to describe what he's eating in elegant, detailed terms. He doesn't speak the language of food or even the language of the people in most of the countries he visits. And yet, he always finds a way to perfectly communicate his gratitude and joy to everyone he meets. The show is really not about the food. It's about the relationships he creates using the language of love wherever he goes. When the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, the scripture says they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. God had done a mighty deed through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ who had conquered death so that everyone can live in peace both now and forever. And people from all over the world were enabled to hear and understand their joy. What they didn't understand was how a bunch of uneducated Galileans could be speaking the language of Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Egyptians in the proper geographical dialect. The scripture says they were bewildered, amazed, astonished, perplexed. So they looked for a logical explanation. I know, they must be drunk. But the disciples weren't drunk. They were simply filled with the Holy Spirit who had given them all the ability to create new relationships in ways they could never have imagined on their own. Thomas Long says, when all is said and done, the gift that we get on Pentecost is not the superficial gift of energy and excitement an injection of artificial adrenaline. And it's not the kind of power that the world thinks of as power. The gift we get on Pentecost is the gift of something to say, a word to speak to the brokenness and tragedy of this world that is unlike any other word. Did you notice what happened to the church when the Spirit arrived? It stood up and spoke. It moved from silence to language. It talked and the whole world heard the good news in its own language. Our tendency is to be quiet, keep to ourselves. We don't want to offend anybody or take the risk of being misunderstood. But what would happen if we allowed ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit and intentionally reached out to the people in our community who tend to be pushed down and set aside with the language of love? What would happen if we said out loud over and over that everybody is welcome here, black, white, gay, straight, rich, poor, immigrant, imprisoned, addicted, abused. Everybody is welcome to find peace in this place where we can all share in the joy of the Lord. The Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to speak and because they spoke, people were saved. The word saved can also be translated healed or made whole. In other words, Every time the church stands up and speaks the language of love, people are healed. Broken hearts are mended. Relationships are reconciled and communities are restored so they can not only survive but thrive in a world that continually tries to tear us apart. After Peter had finished speaking, the scripture says about three thousand people were added to the group of believers that day. 
and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. They did normal things, but there was nothing normal about it because they lived in awe of the power of God that had not only brought them together, but empowered them to live together in a new way. The early church is described as having all things in common, sharing everything they had with everybody in need so that everyone had enough. Charles Williamson says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, believers began to think about things in a new way, to see the common good of the community that was more important than their individual wants and needs. That's not normal in a society that elevates individuality and fights for individual rights. But remember, the church was never created or called to conform to the standards of society, but to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit so it can create new life in ways that we could never imagine on our own. And there is no greater indication that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in this time and place than in the words and actions of the people of God. I can't wait to get back in the sanctuary. But I pray that we never settle for normal. The world needs to hear what we have to say. And it's watching how we live in relationship with God and each other. May they hear and understand our joy as we follow the abnormal, unexpected, extraordinary movement of the Holy Spirit as it blows through us and makes all things new. Amen.
Thank you, Rachel and Debbie. And thank you, Debbie, for joining us today. What a beautiful gift she's brought to share. Our, um, one of the ways that we share the love of Christ in tangible ways is to give of our tithes and offering just as the early church shared everything they had so that everybody in need would have enough. And you are welcome as you leave this place today to drop your offering in the Presbyterian pie plate there on the way out. It is also, because it is Pentecost, an opportunity for you to give a little bit extra to the denominational Pentecostal offering. And if you did not bring that with you today, you are welcome to mail it in as the week progresses. Let us pray our prayer of dedication together. God of great wonders, we join with you in the joy of giving. You give us life and breath, you fill the world with beauty, our hands with bounty, and our hearts with the desire to give. Accept these gifts and ourselves in your service. Amen. Let us continue to pray for our needs and the needs of the world. Gracious and holy God, giver of life in every age, we know your church was never created or called to conform to the ways of the world, but to be transformed by your spirit that continues to blow through our lives, making all things new. We want to speak the words that you have given louder and more clearly in the days ahead as we carefully and compassionately crawl out of this crazy time of isolation so that everyone can hear and understand the joy you've given us all through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your fire of love upon us to be the body of Christ in a world that is often hurting, hungry, and confused. We want to bring good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to captives, bring recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty all who are battered and bruised. We pray for health and wholeness for all who are suffering. For those who are physically ill, for those who are emotionally weary, for those who are financially strained, and for those who are spiritually unwell, we pray for the healing of your creation and the renewal of all things. Send your spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise, for only in your spirit can we voice your words of peace in Jesus as Lord. All praise and glory and honor to you, O Lord, as we boldly speak the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and sing out together hymn number 280. Come, O oh Spirit, dwell among us.
grace of God the Father, the love of Christ the Son, grant you peace as you leave this place empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak and live in new ways so that everyone can hear and understand the joy we've been given to share with one another both now and forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.